Mystical Life Practice Community. And you can have your soles of feet together, knees knocking wide, arms reaching up overhead, gripping opposite elbows. Man, my cat has been doing this lately. When I get into this pose, she comes on top of me. It's like on an episode of Indian Matchmaker, they did goat yoga. <laughs> I don't know why she does this. Take some deep breaths. Getting grounded through your back body. Spacious and open through your heart. Take some deep breaths in and out. So we're gonna be working on the build up to and the release from curl pose today. She's lying down. No, you need to get off of me. <laughs> and this pose is about finding a peaceful center in challenging situations. Right? It's not about lifting up into the full shape. It's about feeling the strength and the stretch and the build up too and and the release from a posture. So maybe set your intention to identify the emotions that come up from the shapes that we're doing and just learning about ourselves from that information. Right, arm balancing can, can bring up frustration, feelings of inadequacy or feelings of freedom and focus and playfulness. Take your knees into your chest. Give your body a nice sweet little hug. And then we're gonna open our knees wider than the torso. Lift your feet up to the sky. Grip your palms onto your feet or ankles, taking your half feet baby. And we did this pose um, Yes, I'm like, what am I looking for? We did this pose in our power party this morning, <laughs> half an hour ago. <laughs> so some of you are familiar. You're gonna take your arms to the inside of your knees. You're gonna zip your knees in tight and you're gonna push the ground away, feeling your core engaging. Nice, and then just release down. Start to rock and roll the length of the spine. Nice, you're gonna rock and roll up through a cross-legged shape and all the way to your table. Nice, and from your table, I want you to inhale into a cow and then exhale into a cat. And when you find your cat, I want you to hold your cat. And then breathe in and then breathe out and then do it again, inhale cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale. Exhale. Keep moving. Pause and breathe. So we're stretching out the upper back here. And this is the flexion of the spine that you'll need to get into that crow-like shape. It's exactly how we want the back to be when we get into that pose. So maybe just one more. And then come all the way into a neutral. Tuck your toes, lift your hips all the way up and back, down dog. Bend through the knees. Just walk out through the heels. Maybe bending both knees at once and then lifting the hips up. 
Leave your left foot where it is. Take your right leg all the way up towards the sky, three-legged dog. And then we're gonna draw the right knee in and we're gonna step the right foot wider than the hand. So you're coming into this lizard pose. Nice. Just opening through the hip. Stay for a few breaths. Nice, and then can you just step your right foot back to meet your left so you're in your plank, holding strong in your plank, navel zipping in, three, two, and then one, land onto your right elbow now. Walk your left palm back a little bit so it's half in a chaturanga. So left arm's in a chaturanga, right arm's in a forearm plank. Yeah, you got it, stay there, three, two, one, can you land your left elbow now? Forearm plank, staying here. Three, two, nice. And then one, soften your hips, lift your heart. Find your sphinx. Oh, I'm afraid I won't go so hard on you guys after we just did our power party. <laughs> I already feel a bit tired. <laughs> Tuck the toes, lift the hips up. Leave your left elbow where it is. Land your right palm. So now you're in this forearm plank, half chaturanga, opposite side. And then can you press up all the way into your full plank? Nice. And then move through a vinyasa. Beautiful. All the way up into your down dog. Leave your right foot where it is. Take your left leg up. Draw your left knee in. Step your left foot wider than your hands, lizard. Nice, just staying there for a few breaths. Nice. And then step your left foot back in space to meet your left, sorry, to meet your right. Now we're gonna do the opposite side. Come onto your left forearm, step your right fingertips back, bend through your right elbow so you're in this chaturanga, you're in a forearm plank on your left elbow. And then can you land your right elbow, forearm plank both sides, soften your hips down, open your heart, breathe your sphinx. You know, she's climbing on me in Sphinx pose. Seriously, this cat. <laughs> I don't know if I should go up to plank while she's on me. <laughs> Can I do it? Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so now you're gonna lift your left palm. <laughs> left palm is in chaturanga, right arm's in forearm plank. Come all the way up into your full forearm, or sorry, full plank. Oh my God, I can't speak today. Move through your vinyasa. Nice. Come all the way up and back, down dog. Bend through your knees, gaze forward. You're gonna hop into a crisscross. Come back into your Navasana, your boat pose. Take an inhale with everything zipped in, and then extend and hinge back. And then breathe in, zip all the way up. Let's do a few more like this. Lowering, lifting. Nice work, lower, and then lift. Can you do three more? Two more. Nice, last one, lower down. Come all the way onto the mat, interlace the palms behind the skull. Curl your heart up, right elbow, left knee, and then switch left elbow, right knee, riding the bicycle. Let's take 10, nine, eight, seven, Got it. Five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, come all the way down, palms onto the backs of the thighs. Can you rock and roll the length of the spine? Rocking and rolling all the way up and back. 
Eventually you're gonna find yourself come all the way up into a strong chair and just hold your chair, fire building. Nice, three, two, one, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Nice, exhale, lower, plant the palms, make your way back to a down dog. And if you wanna take a vinyasa, go ahead. Nice work. From your down dog, lift your right leg up. Lift your right leg as high, high, high as you can. And then take the right leg all the way back in. Draw the right knee in. Step the right foot between your palms. Nice. Land onto your left heel at a 45 degree angle. You're gonna lift all the way up into a warrior one. Press down through the right heel. Press down through your left toe mound. Keep the bend in the right knee. And then lengthen your right leg up. Reach through your arms. You're going to hinge forward. And then let your arms dangle, framing the right foot. So you're in this pyramid pose, hinging forward. And then bend through your right knee. Lift all the way back up to a warrior one. Take your palms into your heart center. Shift weight onto your right foot. Lift your left leg into a warrior three. Beautiful. Now can you hinge forward, frame your foot, and once again, lift your left foot as high as you can, standing splits. Three, two, and then one, step your left foot all the way back, get strong. You got it. Step your right foot back, hold your plank. Come into a forearm plank with both arms. Nice, now can you walk your feet closer to your elbows and lift your butt up? So this is your dolphin pose. Really push through the elbows, lift the hips. Walk your feet back again, forearm plank. Nice. Soften your hips down, sphinx open your heart. Nice. Lower down. Push through the palms, come up onto your knees. Yeah, low plank. Elbows drawing back. This is a yoga push up and then push the ground away. We have not done these in ages. I used to do them all the time. <laughs> nice, draw your elbows back, Matt. Yours are going out to the side, draw them back. Yeah. So when you're chaturanga-ing, your elbows, are creating this shelf going back. And if your elbows are going out like this, this is like a yoga, or it's like a push up from PE, which is fine. <laughs> but this, keeping them in, is building that chaturanga strength, which you're gonna use in your crow. Take three more. Two. Oh, and then one, and done. <laughs> Come all the way back up into a table. And then tuck your toes down dog. Opposite side. Left leg lifts, lift your left leg as high, high, high as you can. And then pull your left knee in. Step your left foot between your palms, land onto your right heel. Lift all the way up, warrior one. Pressing through your right heel, bending through the left knee. And then how would it feel to lengthen the left leg, reach the arms upwards, and then hinge forward, finding your pyramid, getting a deep hamstring stretch. This is not necessarily to prep for crow, but just because I feel like it <laughs> feels needed today. And then bend through the left knee. 
Take your palms into your heart center. Can you shift weight onto your left foot? Lift your right leg, warrior three. Nice. And then hinge forward, plant the palms, frame the foot, lift your right leg as high as you can, standing splits. Beautiful. And then step the right foot all the way back, back, back on the mat. Beautiful, press the palms down, step your left foot back. Same thing as before, land onto your elbows, forearm plank. Nice, how would it feel to walk your feet up closer to you so you find your body into a dolphin? And then from our dolphin, let's just play around. Lift your left leg high up in the air. So these are pincha arms. Forearm stand arms. I cannot do forearm stand at all. <laughs> if you want to play around with hopping, go ahead. I know Yasser requested this last week and I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> nice. Nice. Whoa, Yasser's doing pincha. Wow. Does not surprise me. <laughs> Impressive. Keeping your head lifted when you do it. I can't see if your head's lifted. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, oh my God, amazing. Cool. And his camera just went off. Oh no, there he is. <laughs> cool. All right, coming all the way back. Come back into that low plank, knees back and we're doing it again. Yeah. Elbows drawing back, pushing the round away, yoga push-ups. Nice, good, Matt, much better, good. Let's just do five more. Four, good, three, two, nice. And then one, sit back for a moment in child pose, take a deep breath. Lift all the way up into a table. Tuck your toes back to your down dog. Leave your left foot where it is. Take your right leg up, three-legged dog. Once again, lifting your right leg as high as you can. Maybe from your down dog, playing around with just hopping the left foot up. kind of like a modified handstand hop. And then take your right knee in, come all the way into the chest with the right knee. Tap it over to the left, through center, over to the right, back through center. Take a big step with the right foot between your hands. Nice, land onto your left heel, and then lift all the way up into a warrior one. Beautiful. Now this time, Let's open our arms and play with pressing our palms together behind our back body if you can. Pressing your palms face up behind your back body and then lengthen through your right leg. And then we'll take that exact same pose, pyramid pose, but with our hands connected back there. So inhale and then hinge forward, humbling your heart. Nice big stretch through the right leg. Nice. Lift all the way back up. Bend through your right knee. Shift weight off of the back foot. Can you do warrior three like this with your hands connected behind your heart center? Nice work, beautiful. And then release the grip. Hinge your hands down again. Lift your left leg as high as you can. Nice, standing splits, tucking your heart towards your right leg. And then again, step your left foot back. Get strong through your palms, step back, plank. Nice work, vinyasa, to your down dog. Yeah. 
beautiful. Simply yoga, kind of. It's not so simple, but our flows are simple. <laughs> Take your left leg up. Same thing as we did before, lift your left leg as high as you can. Maybe some little modified handstand hops, hopping the back foot up. Nice. Whoa, nice. Beautiful. And then taking that right foot all the way back down again. Yasser should be teaching this class. <laughs> And then pull your left knee in. You're gonna tap left knee to left elbow. Take it through center. Left knee, right elbow through center. Good, and then just step your left foot between your palms. Land onto your right heel. Lift all the way up to this warrior one. Nice. And then swim your arms back again. Plant your palms onto the spine together if you can, or maybe just grip opposite elbows. That's a modification. Lengthen through your left leg, lift your heart, hinge forward. Nice. How would it feel to trust weight onto your left foot? Find your warrior three with this variation. Beautiful. And then release the grip that you've chosen. Frame your foot, lift your right leg up. Nice, three, two, and one. Step your right foot all the way back. Plant your palms, step your left foot back, plank. Good. And this time from plank, we're just gonna land onto the knees for a second. We're gonna practice with the setup for headstand. So for headstand, you're gonna grip your palms onto opposite elbows. You are gonna make that connection and land it onto your mat. Nice. Release your grip so you interlace the palms. And then the skull snuggles in between the hands. And then you're gonna tuck your toes and walk your butt up. Do not hop, because that's how you fall. See if you can lightly lift and tuck your knees in. And if you just stay here, that's okay. And then maybe you can slowly lift up. Being really mindful and really careful. And remember that accomplishing the pose is not what we're here for. It doesn't matter does not make you a better person, does not make you better at yoga. Nice, and you will get there with practice. Beautiful. When you've had enough of that, Come back into your child's pose. Nice, from your child's pose, roll up to seated. Roll onto your bottom. Now we're gonna take a hip opening pose, go Mukhasana, to kind of break up our flows a little bit. You're gonna stack your left knee on the mat and then stack your right knee on top. So knees are stacking on top of each other. Nice, this is a deep hip opening shape. Good, oh, that's log pile. Amber, you're gonna stack the knees directly like this. Yeah, 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 you got it, exactly. Yeah, perfect, okay. And then take your right arm up, land your right palm onto your left shoulder, and then left palm might either land on the elbow or just weave it back and see if you can get palms together. Nice. So in our practice, it's kind of these complementary patterns of form and movement and awareness connected with the breath. Mm -hmm. 
in this pose, just inhaling deeply and smoothly and just feel almost like a rising and a spreading in the core. Exhaling stability and grounding. Take one more breath. Nice, and then release that. And then let's take the opposite side, okay? So right knee is going to tuck in, heel tucks in, and then you'll snuggle your left knee on top. Knee stacking. Yeah, beautiful, you got it. Nice. And then lift your left palm up. Plant your left palm onto your right shoulder. And either your right palm stays on the left elbow or it weaves back. Good. So can you find this balance between your breath in kind of opening your heart and exhaling, rooting into the earth. Rooting to rise. Taking one more breath. Nice, and then just release your grip. Unweave your legs. Challenge time. You can stay crisscross, or you might snuggle your right hip, your right knee into your left hip crease, and your left into your right to take your locust. So you can either do it crisscross, or you can snuggle your feet in if it's accessible. Nice. Either way, either hands go on the mat or maybe on your blocks. I prefer it on my blocks. It's easier for me to get that lift. You're gonna push through your palms onto your blocks of your mat and see if you can bring yourself up to float, levitating like in Harry Potter. And if you're like, what the F, then just don't do it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Taking three. Nice, two. And then one, come all the way down, nice work. Open your legs up. Ah. <laughs> Take your wide legs, and then let's just do a little forward fold, okay? Walking your hands forward. Ah. Taking some deep breaths. So we're gonna do one more standing blow. Short and sweet with the standing blow today, so there's more time to do our arm bow. Take one more breath. And then walk your hands all the way back again. Coming back to your crisscross, all the way back through a table, and then up and back to your down dog. Leave your left foot where it is. Take your right leg all the way up, three-legged dog. And then same movement as before, draw your right knee in. Step your right foot between your palm, land onto your left heel. All the way up into crescent lunge. Nice. This time take your palms into your heart center. Lengthen through your right leg. Inhale, and then hinge forward, finding your pyramid. Nice, and then if you want to frame your foot, go ahead. Landing your palms onto the mat. Option to stay here, option to leave your left palm where it is and reach your right arm up towards the sky so you're twisting into a revolved triangle. Yeah, you got it, nice. And then maybe you shift weight onto your right foot and left hand and lift your right, your left leg up, your right arm up, so this is your revolved half moon, yeah, nice, good. And then step your left foot all the way back again. Lift both arms up, bring your body into a crescent lunge. Open your arms into cactus, 
Take your right arm underneath the left, weave your arms together. Warrior three with eagle arms. Let's trust weight onto our right foot, lift our left leg. Beautiful. And then how would it feel to lift all the way up to stand and cross your left thigh on top of your right and then sit back into your full eagle, your Varadasana. Nice. Three, two, one. Lift everything up. Firmly plant through your feet. Sweep your arms. Take your palms into your heart center, eyes closed. breaths that you're here now. That's it. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, lower, plant your palms. Make your way back to a plank. Take a vinyasa. Take your left leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Nice work. Pull your left knee in. Step your left foot between your palms. Land onto your right heel, lift all the way up. Warrior one, take your palms into your heart center, lengthen through your left leg. Take a big inhale, hinge forward. Nice, land your palms onto the mat, frame the foot. Option one, stay here. Option two, sweep your left arm up, revolve triangle. Option three, shift weight onto your left foot and right fingertips extending your right leg out. Nice, and then how would it feel to step your right foot all the way back? Come all the way back up to a crescent lunge. You got it, open your arms. Weave your left arm underneath the right this time, eagle. Trust that your left foot will hold you. Warrior three. Nice, and then tilt all the way up to stand. Cross your right thigh on top of your left. And then can you come all the way up to stand and then just land your right foot, sweep your palms skyward. And then take your palms into heart center, close your eyes, a few breaths. Step your feet a bit wide, toes out, heels in. And then sit your body just down into a little squat. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna talk through Vakasana or Crow Pose. You can stay in this little squat and watch or you can come into a cross-legged, either or. So when we're coming into our crow, you want your hands to be super wide and firm and spread. You're gonna plant your palms onto the mat and almost have them like the width of the shoulders, yeah? Lift your butt up towards the sky. I like to have that lift. And it can also sometimes even help to have a block in front of your forehead so that you feel like the block will protect you if you fall, so you don't fall flat on your face. That can sometimes be nice. You're gonna bend through the elbows and snuggle your knees as high as you can into your armpits. And then look forward, okay? If you look down, you're gonna fall because you you flow where your eyes are going. So if you look down, you fall, but if you look forward, creates that bit of lift. And then maybe you just lift one toe and then maybe the next. Nice. Yeah, you can also have that block underneath your toes to give you some lift too, Amber. Yeah, nice. Good, look forward 
Yeah, so look forward. Yeah. Nice. So making sure that you build from the ground up, right? You have your strong, super strong foundation. Paying attention to your hands, right? Pressing out from the knuckles. And then once you're lifted, can you draw your navel in and hollow out your spine a little bit so you have that flexion just like we did in our, our cat? Yeah, nice. Good. Yeah, you got it, Amber. Nice. That's amazing. Looks so good. Try to create space between the shoulders and the ears. Nice, and then just have fun with it. Just enjoy. And then when you have just finished playing with your crow, yeah, you can hop back, beautiful. And then come all the way up to your down dog hand or your child's pose. Nice. So we are gonna move towards the wall for the next thing. And I'm just gonna move my computer. Da, 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 so I have some space. go. All right, so what we're going to do next, we are going to come onto our wall and measure the exact same way that we did last week. So measuring your hands, finding this L shape. Nice. Good, and then landing your palms where your feet are and just swiveling around. And then firmly planting and spreading through your palms, getting that exact same energy and tension that we did through our throat. And then pressing firmly and see if you can lift your butt up so you find this L. Nice, and we're just gonna play with taking our right knee in and see if you can bring your right knee into your chest and then lift your left leg, or sorry, your right leg all the way up as high as you can. Coming forward, and then lifting it all the way up. Just two more on this side, taking your knee in, lifting it up, Ugh. one more. And then put your right foot firmly back on the wall, opposite side, left knee in, lift it up. Three more in. And then up. Oh, I'm too tired. I'm stopping. Two more. <laughs> nice work. And then one more. Nice. Beautiful. Nice. And then from that L shape on the wall, if you want to try hopping your hands closer to the wall, go ahead. I'm not going to. Oh. Nice. Ah. We're gonna handstand by the end of 2020. That's the goal. <laughs> Let's do it. Nice work. And then when you have had enough of that, <laughs> you're gonna come back onto your mat. And we're gonna come all the way back onto the spine. So we've done quite a few inversions today, but we're gonna do one more. We're gonna lift up into shoulder stand. So you can stay here with just your legs lifted and your arms lifted, or you might lift your butt up, have the palms on the back of the spine, lift your legs all the way up. Keeping your shoulders stand, just stretching out the back. Just 
Letting the blood flow go back to the brain. And then slowly lower down. Taking your knees into your chest, can you open your arms into cactus? And then just drop your knees over to the right and gaze over to the left. Oh, spinal twist. Take the knees all the way back through center. Drop the knees the opposite way. So drop over to the left, knees over to the right. And then come all the way back up. Taking your knees into your chest, giving your body a nice little hug. If there's any last movements that you want to do before we take a Shavasana, happy baby or pigeon or anything that your body is craving at this moment, Feel free to take it now. So how can, how can crow pose teach us to, to face challenges with preparation? with patience, with grace. How can your breath support you when you're in the midst of a challenge? What support do you have? What support do you need in challenging times? ready finding your way into your shavasana no rush at all to get there so there's a lesson in everything there's something to learn from each situation more difficult and uncomfortable that it is, the more that we have to learn. And yoga teaches us the skills of what to do in these moments of difficulty. The hardest part of the pose might be lifting up. The knees want to slide off the elbows. The weight on the arms feels unbearable. The collarbone's caving in. And what you need is a perfect mix of effort where effort is needed. Patience to wait for the body to open. 
strength to stay the course through thousands of tries, faith to believe that one day you'll do it. Take this formula off your yoga mat and in your life and you'll not only have success, you'll have a peace that sits so deeply that nothing else will matter. Ishkavuga mahu lela, Ishkava mahu lela, Ishkavuga mahu lela, Ishkava mahu lela, Ishkavuga mahu lela. Ishkava mahu lela. Ishkava mahu lela. Give your fingers and your toes a little wake up wiggle. Running a nice long stretch, fingertips all the way through toe. Can you take your knees into your chest and give your body a nice little hug?
And then just make your way up to seated. Can you think of one moment from this practice or one moment from this week or one moment from this year that you're super proud of? Acknowledge your progress, acknowledge your transformation and know that that only comes with you consistently showing up. Thank yourself for that. Close with our intention, ancient intention, but the original intention. Passed from teacher to teacher through thousands of years. And it's that our practice remains steady and that our efforts remain continuous and that our yoga serves and benefits all beings everywhere. May all beings be safe, be happy, be healthy, be free. May the thoughts and actions of each of our lives contribute towards this. So we'll finish with an ohm. We're gonna inhale, exhale. Inhale through to make the ohm. So a big breath in. Big breath out. Big breath in. Oh. Thank you so much for joining. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Om Shanti, 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 peace, namaste. Thank you guys. Let me go get my Facebook.